Hello friends, welcome to Hybrid Academy and to the sixth session of Learn Photography. In this complete course, we will learn how to capture pictures perfectly and in the sixth session, we will learn about the manual mode of camera. Here's a small brief on Hybrid Academy imparting professional education. We have a thought to change billions of lives by providing professional education accessibly and affordably. To reskill and upskill the professional level of knowledge. To make continuous learning a part of life and to make personalized education accessible. We focus on interactive education because it is engaging and better for learning. So please like, share and subscribe our channel so that every time you are notified whenever some new content is posted. We are eagerly looking forward to your support. So if we see in detail, in the sixth session we will learn what is manual mode, relationship of shutter speed and aperture, process of shooting in manual mode, light metering in manual mode, adjusting the shutter speed and apertures in manual mode and details on ISO. After this in the end we will summarize everything we have learned and will know what we will learn in the next session. In case if you have any queries or questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment box. Now let's quickly start with our session, why shoot in manual mode. We can describe the manual mode in just two words, total control. Manual mode gives you the independence to break out the dependency on the fully auto mode or partial auto modes and allows you to fully manipulate the photo output by controlling the three major points of exposure triangle that is aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Using this, you can give a lot of creative angle to your regular pictures. Manual mode is accessible by switching the dial to M which stands for manual. Nowadays, this mode is also available in smartphone cameras and you can customize your mobile photo as well to quite an extent with the help of this mode. Once switched to this mode, you will see that all options of the camera are enabled to be edited and you can change each and every setting as per your own choice. Let's quickly revise what we have learned about stops in the last lesson. Every single increment or decrement on the light meter is considered to be one stop. This indicates exactly how many stops we are away from a balanced exposure. With this knowledge, we can quickly make accurate adjustments to the camera settings to find balanced exposure. One stop increment means we are doubling the amount of light reaching the camera sensor. On the contrary, each stop decrement means we are reducing the amount of light reaching the camera sensor by half. Going further, let's also revise what we learned about the camera shutter in third session of Learn Photography. The camera shutter controls the duration of light entering the camera and exposing the sensor. The length of time that shutter is open is known as shutter speed. For more light, the shutter will open for a longer duration. For less light, the shutter will open for a shorter duration. Lastly, as we know that the time is measured in hours, minutes and seconds, the shutter speeds are measured in seconds and fraction of seconds, which means the shutter is also open for a duration which is less than a second. So here you can see that the lowest shutter speed is one fourth of a second and the highest shutter speed is eight thousandth of a second. You can imagine how fast the shutter opens and closes to capture the perfect shot. Some of the common and frequently used shutter speeds are 1 by 250, 1 by 500 or 1 by 1000. Now let's combine both the knowledge we have. Usually to adjust the light meter, the very first thing we adjust is the shutter speed. 
each shutter speed change in increased or decreased order is exactly one stop apart. In other words, increasing the shutter speed actually changes the light meter to minus one stop and decreasing the shutter speed actually changes the light meter to plus one stop. Both shutter speed and f-stop are inversely proportional to each other. Let's take an example of this picture where this is correctly exposed at 1 by 500 shutter speed. If we try to reduce the shutter speed, maybe to get some motion captured, the output photo will be overexposed by plus one stop. Similarly, if we try to increase the shutter speed, maybe not to get some motion captured, the output photo will be underexposed by minus one stop. Now, let's revise the other parameter that is aperture or f-stop. The aperture of every camera lens is expressed in the form of f-stops or f-numbers. These numbers are inversely in relation to the aperture hole size, which means the bigger the f-number, the smaller the aperture hole size, and the smaller the f-number, the bigger the aperture hole size. Every lens has different aperture size range available and can be managed under the aperture mode or manual mode. Now let's again combine both the knowledge we have. To adjust the light meter, we can also adjust aperture along with the shutter speed. Each aperture change in increased or decreased order is exactly one stop apart. In other words, Increasing the aperture actually changes the light meter also to plus one stop and decreasing the aperture changes the light meter also to minus one stop. Both aperture and f-stops are directly proportional to each other. In other words, we can say that increasing the aperture size doubles the light falling on the sensor and decreasing the aperture size reduces the light falling on the sensor to half. Let's again review the same picture in terms of correct exposure with aperture. In this slide, we see the picture as correctly exposed. An increase in the aperture size results in increasing the light falling on the sensor making the picture overexposed. A decrease in the aperture size results in decreasing the light falling on the sensor making the picture underexposed. Now let's move to the most important part of this complete course of learn photography and that is shooting in the manual mode. Shooting in manual mode involves four steps. The very first thing is to do a meter reading. Just see if the light meter is on zero or is moved towards the positive end or negative end. Based on the analyzed meter reading, Determine if the light falling on the sensor for the correct exposure is how much less or how much more. Based on your understanding, manually set the shutter speed and aperture combination to get the correct amount of light for right exposure. Once the settings are done, click the shot. Now let's also revise the meter reading in manual mode. As we read before, the light metering scale ranges from minus 2 to plus 2 helps us to identify if the picture is going to be underexposed or overexposed. In this scale, we have a marker, like we have a small marker below 0 as visible on the left side screen. This marker indicates if the current setting of aperture, shutter speed and ISO combine to create a properly exposed photo. If the settings are not set for a properly exposed photo, the marker slides towards one side or the other of zero, indicating that the light is either too less or too much for the photo to be shot. The farther the bar moves from the center point, the more the setting needs to be altered to achieve the correct exposure. 
to further explain this if the bar moved towards the minus it is indicating that there isn't enough light or the photo will probably be too dark this is considered to be underexposed and if the bar moves towards the plus it is indicating that there is too much light and the photo will probably be too bright this is considered to be overexposed going further we will review some more examples where the incorrect exposure is visible on the metering scale and we will adjust the same using shutter speed or aperture in this example picture we can see that the light meter is showing the reading of minus 1 which means the picture is underexposed with aperture as f by 22 and shutter speed as 1 by 250 to balance the light meter to 0 we can either increase the aperture size or decrease the shutter speed increasing the aperture size will make the picture blur due to the depth of field so the better option is to decrease the shutter speed after decreasing the shutter speed by one stop that is from 1 by 250 to 1 by 125 the light meter got a balanced exposure In the next example picture we can see that the light meter is showing the reading of plus 2 which means the picture is overexposed with aperture as f by 16 and shutter speed as 1 by 15 to balance the light meter to 0 we can either decrease the aperture size or increase the shutter speed After increasing the shutter speed by two stops that is from 1 by 15 to 1 by 60 the light meter got balanced exposure In the next example picture we can see that the light meter is showing the reading of minus 2 which means the picture is underexposed with aperture as f by 16 and shutter speed as 1 by 125 To balance the light meter to 0 we can either increase the aperture size or can decrease the shutter speed increasing the aperture size from f16 to f8 by two stops resolves the issue putting the light meter marker to zero giving a balanced exposure let's see one more example where the light meter is showing the reading of plus 1 which means we are one stop overexposed and need to balance the same using aperture or shutter speed reducing the aperture by one stop that is from f by 2.8 to f by 4 decreases the exposure by one stop and makes the picture balanced in terms of exposure moving further let's see what is iso international standards organization ISO which is an international organization for standardization is an independent non-governmental organization that develops standards to ensure the quality safety and efficiency of products services and systems In case of camera ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light as it pertains to either film or a digital sensor A lower ISO value means less sensitivity to light while a higher ISO means more sensitivity. In a layman's language, ISO is simply a camera setting that will brighten or darken the photo. As we increase the ISO number, the camera sensor will be more sensitive absorbing more light resulting in photos to grow progressively brighter. ISO can basically help to capture images in darker environments or it helps to provide more flexibility to the aperture and shutter speed settings. Just like shutter speed and aperture, each ISO value is one stop apart. This means if we switch the ISO value from ISO 200 to ISO 400, picture will be one stop overexposed. moving the marker on the light meter to plus 1 going further we will review some examples where the incorrect exposure is visible on the metering scale and we will adjust the same using iso
In this example picture, we can see that the light meter is showing the reading of minus 1, which means the picture is underexposed with aperture as f by 22, shutter speed as 1 by 500, and ISO as 100. To balance the light meter to 0, we need to move the marker to 0 on the light meter. After increasing the ISO by one stop, that is from 100 to 200, the light meter got a balanced exposure. In the next example picture, we can see that the light meter is showing the reading of minus 2, which means the picture is underexposed with aperture as f by 2.8, shutter speed as 1 by 125 and ISO as 200. To balance the light meter to 0, we can either decrease the aperture size or increase the shutter speed or increase the ISO by 2 stops. After increasing the ISO by 2 stops, that is from ISO 200 to ISO 800, the light meter got balanced exposure. ISO is no doubt a very good resource to brighten or overexpose the image. However, it has a limitation and consequences. A photo taken at a too high ISO value will show a lot of grain, also known as noise, and such photos might not be usable. So it is always recommended to increase the value of ISO only and only when we are unable to brighten the photo via shutter speed or aperture instead. This varies from situation to situation and a lot on the equipment and external factors. This slide is the most important slide of the complete course. This shows the brief of almost everything important we have learned so far in this course and will help us to understand the three pillars on which each and every shot is dependent. Every photo has three basic pillars which help to get the right exposure for a beautiful output. These three pillars are aperture, shutter speed and ISO value and together they form a exposure triangle. If the value of any one of these is altered, the other two have to be accordingly adjusted to balance the difference and giving the correct exposure. Here the light is compared with water for better explanation. The opening and closing of tap is like shutter which allows or blocks the water for specific period of time. Once the tap is open, the hole at the end of the tap controls the amount of water to come out of tap. And lastly, the glass kept at the bottom is the ISO which controls the amount of water that can be stored which is similar to the light absorbed in a camera sensor. A correct combination of these three is the base of the right photography. Today in lesson 6, we have learned about the fully manual mode of camera, using the aperture and shutter together in manual mode, and about the ISO, its usage and limitation. In the next and the last session, we will learn about the color temperature, white balance and focusing techniques. We will also learn about the quality of light and how the light falling on the object can also change the color of picture. Thank you for joining the complete course. Please share and subscribe our channel so that your friends also get benefited with the information, acquire free knowledge and learn new things. We are eagerly looking forward to your support. Thanks, take care and stay safe. Hope to see you in the next session.